Welcome to an algebra lesson. Today we're going to be writing the equation of a line from a scatter plot. Our objective today is I will be able to write an equation for a trend line and use it to make predictions. I'm Mr. Pi the math guy. Before we get into this lesson, what I want to talk about are some key words here, some words that should be prior knowledge. Slope. Slope is a rate of change usually designated by the lowercase m and the rate of change is the change in the vertical values over the change in the horizontal values or the change in the y's over the change in the x's. If you've watched some of my previous videos working with linear equations in slope you may have seen me use these triangles that are Greek letter delta and they are used to represent the words change in. So the slope can be known as the change in the y values over the change in the x values. It also could be known as the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Point slope form, uh, that's a form of a linear equation, one of the ways we can represent it. This is given by y is equal to mx plus b. We could call that a formula, if you will. M is the slope, and B is the y-intercept, the place at which the line crosses the y-axis. Now a trend line is a word you may or may not be familiar with, and what a trend line is, is a line used to represent a trend between two sets of data, and we're really going to talk more about that in the upcoming slide. Here we're going to talk about Scatter plots, a real quick review in case you're unfamiliar with them. When you have a discussion about a scatter plot, you really need to talk about the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is graphed along the x axis or the horizontal axis. And also, you should know that the independent variable are usually measurements such as weight, time, or distance. The dependent variable gets graphed along the y axis or the vertical axis. So uh, another thing to understand is that the dependent variable uh, are usually costs or incomes or expenses or profits. So um, linear equations have a lot of business applications. Here we have three scatter plots and in the first scatter plot it is considered to be a positive correlation and the reason it's a positive correlation is that as the x values increase the y values increase. So you can see here generally that both sets of data increase. And to tie in from a word from the previous slide, if we drew a line in here like that, that would be considered a trend line. We can see from left to right that line goes upward, thus it has a positive correlation or a positive slope. On the next graph, we can see that from left to right the trend or the correlation would be negative because it goes downward. So here we have a negative correlation and as we did in the first graph if we try to draw a trend line in there give us an idea of how that data interacts with each other we can see as the x values increase the y values decrease. This is x not y. That's a real bad mess up there. But as the values along the x-axis increase, the values along the y-axis decrease. So generally, one set of data increases and the other set decreases. Over here is an example of no correlation. We couldn't fit a trend line in here to represent this data. Yeah, we could draw lines in there, but there really is no apparent relation between the two sets of data. So now that we've reviewed scatter plots, let's take a look at how to create a scatter plot and then draw a trend line and find the equation. Example one, trend line and prediction. The first thing you should do when solving a problem is rise up to the situation. But what I mean by that is R, you need to read the problem. I, you should illustrate the problem. You should then solve the problem, 
And finally, you should explain the problem. You should rise up to the situation. So, first we're going to read the problem. It asks us to make a scatter plot to represent the data, draw a trend line, and write the equation of the trend line in slope intercept form. Use the equation to predict the time needed to travel 32 miles on a bicycle. Well, first, let's reread the problem and identify what we need to do. We need to make a scatter plot to represent the data. That's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is draw a trend line. The third thing we'll do, write the equation of the trend line in slope intercept form. And finally, the fourth thing we have to do is use the equation to predict the time needed to travel 32 miles on a bicycle. So now that we read the problem, we're going to start to illustrate that problem by making a scatter plot and drawing the trend line. So to make the scatter plot, there's several things we need to consider. The first thing we need to consider is what is the independent variable and the dependent variable. Previously in this video lesson, I said that the things such as time are usually the independent variable, and it is the independent variable in this case. The dependent variable will be the miles. How far the person travels depends on how long they travel for. It's also good to note that when you're given a table, that the independent variable is usually stored in the first column. So what this means for us is that we're going to graph time along the horizontal axis or the x-axis. So we should label that like I just did. And along the y-axis, we're going to put how many miles the bicyclist traveled. Now that we have them labeled, we should number them. And to number them, we have to scale them, and we have to figure out what numbers should I put down here along the x-axis. Well, the numbers go from 27 to 107. That's a range of 80. 107 take away 27 is 80. So we have to cover 80 numbers in this span. I always try to start with 0 if I can. And in this case, I have enough room to do that. I'm going to number this axis, the independent axis, from 0 all the way up to 110. 0 is smaller than my smallest number, and 110 is bigger than my largest data value. So that should be good. Remember, starting here will be 0. And what I'm going to do is count by 10. So this would be 0. This would be 10. This line would be 20. This is 30, 40. 50, this would be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and finally 110. The numbers that I skipped in the middle are just the even numbers, 20, 40, 60. Along the dependent axis, or the y-axis, I have to go from 5 up to 22. That's a range of 17. Again, I'm going to go from 0 up to in this case, 25, because 0 is smaller than the smallest data value, and 25 is larger than the largest data value. So along this axis, I have, I'm going to go from 0 to 25. And the way I'm going to do that is to say that every two lines is 5. So from here to here is 5, so this line would be 2.5. So if this is 5, this would be 10, this would be 15, this would be 20, and finally, this would be 25. Remember, at this point, we're still illustrating the problem. Now that we have the axis set up, we should graph the points, graph the data. And you've got to remember that each pair of these numbers does make an ordered pair. Here we'd have 27, 5. So we go over to 27, which we'll estimate where it's at, and then up to 5 and plot a point. The second set of data is 46 comma 10. So along the time in 46 minutes, the person travels 10 miles. We plot that point. The third point is 71 comma 14. So over to 71 and up to 14, which would be right below 15. 78 and 18. So in 78 minutes, the person travels 
18 miles. And finally, in 107 minutes, the person travels 22 miles. So we've created the scatter plot. Now we need to put in a trend line, a line that's going to represent the data. Now, one key thing to understand is another data value for this would be zero, zero. After zero minutes, the bicyclist won't travel any miles. So we can put one point there and draw a trend line. Now let me show you here. Let me illustrate this for you. This would not be a good trend line the way I have it here because that trend line is above all the data values. If I moved it to down here, that wouldn't be a good trend line either because it's below all the data values. You want to try to split the data values evenly. And here in this case you can see that I can get nearly two points, maybe almost three points, almost exactly on the line or very close to the line. And now I've illustrated this. Now we need to solve and the solve portion is going to really address the second, this second part of the second sentence. Write the equation of the trend line in slope-intercept form. So to do that, we need to come back to the skills of point-slope and changing point-slope into slope-intercept. So let me get rid of this, and let me show you the solve portion here. What I'm working on now is this. We're going to write the equation of the line, trend line, in slope-intercept form. Now to do that, we have to pick two points to use that are on the line. And I think the points that I want to use are going to be the points, the 71 and 14, this point right here, and the point 27.5, which is right here. These are the two points I'm going to use. Those appear to be the closest to the line or on the line. So now that I have my points, first I'm going to write them down. The one point is going to be 71, 14, and the other point is 27, comma 5. And again, the reason I picked these two points is because they are closest to the trend line. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find the slope. Not stope, slope. That's an L right there, not a T. Slope. So to find the slope, remember we use the slope formula, which says we subtract the Y values. In this case, 14, take away 5, over 71, take away 27. When I simplify this fraction, 14 take away 5 is 9, and 27 or 71 take away 27 is 44. So the slope of this equation is 9 over 44. So what we do then is we use point slope, which is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. We can really use either point, and the point that I'm going to use is this one right here. 27 comma 5, just because the numbers are a little bit smaller. And this is our slope, so we substitute our values in to give y minus 5 is equal to 9 over 44 times the quantity x minus 27. We need to take this point slope form and solve it for y so that it's going to be into slope intercept form. The final form that we're looking for here is y is equal to mx plus b, which means we have to get the y by itself, which means we need to add 5 ultimately, but before we add 5, we have to distribute the 9 over 44. So let's distribute that 9 over 44. 9 over 44 times x gives 9 over 44x. And 9 over 44 times minus 27 is going to give minus 243 over 44. I bring down the left-hand side, y minus 5.
give myself a little bit more room to show my work. From here, I have to add five to both sides. The fives on the left cancel, leaving the Y by itself, so we're getting closer to slope intercept form. 9 over 44x comes down, and I have to simplify this math right here. Negative 243 over 44 plus 5. Well, to do that, you could use a calculator or you can do it by hand. Doing it by hand, we would want to convert this 243 over 44 into a mixed number. Changing that to a mixed number, that would become negative 5 and 23 over 44. And I have to add to that the whole number 5. Well, because they're opposite signs, we subtract their absolute values and give it the sign of the number with the biggest absolute value. So it's going to be a minus here because the absolute value of 5 and 23 over 44 is greater than the absolute value of 5. And then we subtract their absolute values, which would give us 23 over 44. So we've accomplished the solve section of rise, read, illustrate, solve, and explain. We've gotten the equation in slope-intercept form, so we've accomplished another goal, the third part of this. Now we need to use the equation to predict the time needed to travel 32 miles on a bicycle. So we need to figure out how long it's going to take them to ride 32 miles. So we simply, for the last part here, are going to substitute 32 miles into this equation. And that's going to be going in for the y, because the y is the dependent variable. So here, we're going to set up the equation. 32 is equal to 9 over 44x minus 23 over 44. There's a handful of ways of going about this. And I'm going to choose to change these fractions to decimals just to make life a little bit easier. So converting these decimals into fractions is going to give me 32 is equal to approximately 0.2x minus 0.52. So now I have to add 0.52 to both sides. That should be pretty easy. 32 plus 0.52 is 32.52, and that's equal to 0.2x. So we divide each side by 0.2, and to do that division, we move the decimal to the right in each number and then divide. So 325.2 divided by 2, 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over. 2 goes into 12 six times. 2 goes into 5 four times with 1 left over. And 2 goes into 12 six times. And since this number does have one decimal in it, this needs to have one decimal in it. And the amount of time it's going to take this bicyclist to travel 32 miles is going to be 164.6 minutes.